Welcome back, and I've got an absolutely lovely experiment to show you today, and one I've been waiting to show you for a long time. This one is called The Monkey and Hunter. So before we begin our experiment, I need to tell you a little bit of a story that goes behind this experiment. So we go off to the jungle and in the jungle, there's a monkey that lives in a tree and there's a hunter that's been trying to get the monkey. And finally, he decides to go out with a gun and shoot the monkey. Not very nice. OK, but, but th there might be a happy ending to this. Now, um, the uh, hunter really struggles to hit the monkey. He's been trying to line up and take aim, etc. So he's got a new plan. He thinks, what I'll do is I'll play the monkey at his own game and I'll shoot a bullet straight at the monkey. So what he does is he climbs a tree near where the monkey is in his tree and looks across and he looks across at the monkey in the other tree and he notices he's at exactly the same level as the monkey in the other tree. Well, the solution to this is dead easy, okay? All he needs to do is point his rifle straight at the monkey and pull the trigger. Well, the bullet's going to travel forwards. It's lined up with the monkey. He's very close because he's up the tree at the same level. But what happens is somewhat surprising because the monkey thinking he knows a little bit of physics, is going to get out of the way of the bullet. And because he's hanging from the branches, the easiest way to get out of the path of the bullet is just to let go as soon as he sees that trigger being pulled. So we've got a hunter up the tree with a horizontal gun aimed at a monkey hanging from a branch. And they're very close. And as soon as the gun goes bang or he sees the flash from the gun, the monkey lets go. And I wonder if you think whether the monkey survives. So to see what happens, I need to set up a little experiment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a tree in the laboratory and we're going to hang a monkey from that tree electromagnetically off an electromagnet. And then at the other end of the lab, I'm going to get my gun, my launcher, and I'm going to face that straight at the monkey in the tree and I'm going to fire the gun. And the moment the gun fires, the monkey's going to let go and get out of the way of the bullet. Well, let's go and have a look at the apparatus, see how it's set up and then we'll see what happens. OK, so let's see if we can explain how this works. And it's quite simple, really. What we've got is a power supply and an ammeter. And that passes current through an electromagnet along wires to the launcher. But at the moment, the electromagnet's not working because there's two copper contacts on either side of the launcher and they're not connected together. But when I put the projectile on, these copper parts on the projectile will go across those contacts and make the circuit. So let's put that on now. OK, I'm looking at the ammeter to see whether there's a current. So I'm going to make sure I get those contacts nicely lined up. We've got a current flowing. The electromagnet is going to be magnetic. So the can will stick on nicely and we cover that with our monkey uh, to give a bit of a better effect. And then as soon as we break the circuit here, the current stops flowing in the electromagnet and the monkey falls. So the crucial thing is the moment the projectile starts to move, the monkey will start falling.
So we need an explanation here. Um, when we set this up correctly, never mind what we do, okay, as long as the projectile is fired forwards at the same height as the monkey was right at the start, and it reaches this far end, it will always hit the monkey. Now, if you think about it, that seems a bit odd because if we fire the projectile and the monkey starts to fall, doesn't it fall out of the path of the projectile? But in fact, the physics is a little bit different from what you might think. So we need to explain why even a falling monkey gets hit by the projectile. Okay, well, the very simple way to explain this, and some of you might remember the apocryphal story of Galileo Galilei dropping a cannonball and then the ball bearing off the Leaning Tower of Pisa and noticing that both hit the ground at the same time, forgetting the effects of air resistance, of course. So um, the first way to show you how this works is to say, well, what happens if we drop the monkey? What happens if we drop the projectile? So if you remember, a bit of hand waving here, we do it from the same height, you'll notice both hit the ground at the same time. So, if we remember that both objects are going to fall and both are going to hit the ground at the same time, we're beginning to explain why we hit a falling monkey. OK, so let's take our explanation a little bit further. We've established that all things fall at the same rate. OK, the gravitational field in my lab accelerates both of these at 9.81 metres per second quicker every second. So, as soon as the bullet or the projectile leaves the gun, it's going to fall. OK, and that's crucial. That's the vertical direction. The monkey's going to fall as well. So if we forget what's happening horizontally and we sort of freeze frame the bullet here, they're both going to fall at the same rate. So the projectile is always pointing straight at the monkey. So what we've got to do now is take into account the horizontal direction as well and how the projectile gets to the monkey. So now we've got to deal with the horizontal direction. Well, the monkey is the easier one to do. The monkey falls vertically and accelerates at the same rate as the projectile and doesn't have any horizontal motion at all. So we can leave that as it is. The monkey just falls in a straight line. But don't forget the projectile. It had a force on it when it left the gun. And once it's left the gun, there is no force on it driving it forwards. There's a force downwards at 90 degrees accelerating it downwards due to the gravitational field, but there's no force pushing it forwards. So, should we just forget gravity for a minute? Imagine we switch off gravity. What will happen is, once this has left the force of the launcher, it will go across my lab at a constant velocity. There is nothing to speed it up or slow it down in the horizontal direction. So it will be sort of at one moment in time here, the next here, the next here, the next here. So it's got a constant horizontal velocity. Students find that quite tricky. They think something else must be happening. But there are no forces on it in the horizontal direction, so it can't change its horizontal velocity. So what we've got to do now is switch gravity back on and combine the two effects of accelerating downwards and travelling at a constant velocity across the apparatus. So if you understood that, let's put the two ideas together. So if you think about it, you've got a monkey and the projectile falling together and accelerating, getting faster and faster. If you take that into account and understand it, you'll realise that the projectile is always pointing at the monkey as long as they were lined up at the beginning. But we've got the constant horizontal velocity of the projectile. So what's happening is the monkey falls, the projectile falls, moves forward a bit because it's got its horizontal velocity. The monkey falls, the projectiles move forwards a bit. The monkey falls, the projectile moves forwards a bit. The monkey falls, the projectile moves forwards a bit. And if you can imagine that, that, that motion, you've got the combination of a horizontal velocity with a vertical acceleration. So, as long as this was pointing at the monkey at the start, okay, the monkey let go of the tree the same time the projectile came out of the barrel of the launcher, 
and the projectile actually reaches the monkey, then the hunter will always hit the monkey. So this is a really lovely experiment. I hope you understand it now that we've got two directions, the horizontal direction, which in no way affects the vertical direction and vice versa. In other words, the horizontal velocity, which is constant, is independent of the constant acceleration downwards vertically. So I do hope you enjoyed that experiment and learned a little bit about the independence of horizontal velocity with vertical acceleration. OK, students really struggle with this one. Deal with the horizontal velocity totally on its own. Deal with the vertical acceleration totally on their own. But there's one thing you know, that when the object hits the ground, it's been travelling across and down by the same amount of time. Anyway, if the monkey knew just a little bit more physics, it would have survived. So, I do hope you enjoyed that. I'll be making another video soon, and I look forward to seeing you then.